and then we talked about uh, phenylamines. Uh, in phenylamines, you had uh, NH2. This was known as a as a phenylamine if you have benzene plus NH2. This was chlorobenzene, then this was benzoic acid, and this was uh, an aldehyde. And we started talking about 246 directing groups, which was that uh, if you have OH, NH2, or CO, NH2 groups, I told you this was given in the data booklet. I showed you in the data booklet. These are electron donating groups. So the electron cloud previously was equally distributed. But now, if you have an OH group, the electrons over here would increase in density because oxygen has lone pairs and these lone pairs would overlap with the with the with these orbitals which were forming the pi electron cloud so the electron density is going to be higher on this side on the second and the and the sixth position and all the other electrons are going to get repelled and the electron density was all, would also be higher uh, at the fourth position so now if an electrophile attacks it uh, a positive electrophile attacks it tries to gain electrons then it's probably going to be attracted to position two, four, or six. So this is known as two, four, six directing. Two and six are the same position, so you refer to it as two, four directing. NS2 pretty much does the same. The same with arenes. And then you had, and I told you that uh, the density on benzene increases because if the lone pair is also mixed with benzene electron cloud, so the electron cloud density is much higher and the attraction for electrophiles like NO2 plus one it's going to be much greater, which is why the reaction is going to be faster. It's going to be a faster reaction. And then you have three, five directing groups, which are electron withdrawing groups. TK, this is also given in the data booklet, NO2, NH3, CN, CHO, COOH. These are all electron withdrawing groups. What they do is they pull the electron density away from benzene. So the electron density, which increased at position two and six, is now going to be lesser at position two and six. And because the overall effect is the electron density is being, um, uh, drawn towards the right, which is why the electron density is also going to be lesser at position number four. Okay, this is one, two, four, and this is six. So relatively, the electron density is going to be higher at position number three and five. So, so any electrophile would therefore not be attracted at positions two, four, and six, but instead would be attracted to positions three and five. And uh, the overall electron density is lesser uh, because the electron density is getting withdrawn by the group, which is why the reactions would be slower. Electrophiles are not going to be attracted that much because there would be fewer electrons on this electron cloud. Okay. So is this uh, clear? Is this clear to everyone? Aisha, is this clear? Uh, Sarah, is this clear? Ali, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said the next the part that we wanted to, that I wanted to discuss was that uh, it's the electrophilic substitution for arenes. Uh, uh, it's the same conditions as normal benzene. Uh, if you want to do bromination, uh, it's going to be the same thing, except that this is a two four six uh, directing group, which means that a bromine molecule would either be attached to position number two or at position number four. Uh, it could also possibly be attached to all three positions. Uh, but usually it's just one position that it's going to attach. Uh, so it's a it's a two four six directing group, and the same reaction could happen with chlorine if you have Cl two plus FeCl three catalyst, or or you can you can also have AlCl three as a catalyst. I say anyways, uh, so exactly the same reaction, exactly the same mechanism. Now when it comes to phenols, phenols and phenylamine. So electrophilic substitution of phenols and phenylamine. Now, now they're going to be. So now they're going to be uh, almost. I mean, phenols and phenylamine would be almost the same. The first thing is both of them are highly accurate. Let me quickly draw a benzene. So both of them are highly activated, which I showed you earlier as well. So there is, let's say, OH. So because of the lone pairs overlapping with the benzene pi electron cloud, the electron density is much higher at position 2, 4, and, and 6. And the same pretty much applies to the NH2 part as well. 
So so in NH2, that also has this very high electron density lone pair. And the same thing pretty much happens, electron density overlaps. And much higher at position number two, four, and six. So you call them highly activated. These are highly activated benzene rings. So highly activated benzene pi electron cloud. Uh, and they're going to ask you about this. So what you're going to write is that the lone pair on oxygen in OH, these explanations would be needed, overlaps with benzene's pi electron cloud. Remember to use the correct, correct wording, uh, which, which increases, which does that. And they are highly accurate, which means uh, the reactions are going to be considerably faster compared to normal benzenes and arenes. So even the conditions of the reactions are going to change. So considerably faster compared to benzene and arene. You get arene is just a benzene with a carbon chain. Now, carbon chains were doing the same as well, but uh, carbon chains had no lone pairs. I mean, so they were pushing electrons, but they were pushing their own electrons. They didn't have any spare electrons. All the electrons of carbon were bonded. So the, so the push or the electron donating effect was very, very less. But in this case, they have lots of oxygen has two lone pairs, which are not doing anything. So the, so the electrons, they kind of get overlap. Um, I mean, because right now the electrons are concentrated over a very small atom. And this, there's this big area. So electrons, they repel each other. They'd like to kind of get distributed. So if oxygen gets attached to an atom and there's a delocalized electron cloud, the, elect the electrons over here are eventually going to get mixed with the delocalized electron cloud over here. So the reactions are considerably faster. So I'm going to do the first one. The first thing is you don't need a catalyst. TK over here, previously, as a Previously, when we were talking about benzene, when we, we did the mechanism somewhere over here. I said, so previously, bromine molecule was not getting polarized enough. Uh, and you needed a catalyst. You needed someone to sort of pull the electrons and tear this bond apart so that you get a positive bromine, which get, gets attracted to this uh, electron cloud. But now with OH, uh, the electron cloud is way more um, activated. The, the more electrons in the electron cloud because there's an OH over here which is uh, giving its electrons to the electron cloud. So now the reaction and the polarization of bromine would be much faster. So first thing is bromination of phenol. So the first thing is bromination of phenol. Uh, things would be slightly different. So let's make a phenol. And the first thing is the conditions. Uh, you just need Br2 aquas. And that's it. You don't even need a catalyst. And remember, you have to write aqueous. That's very, very important. No catalyst is required. That's the first thing. So no catalyst is needed. And what would, what would happen is that the benzene electron cloud is so polarized that electrophilic substitution would happen at all three positions. So here's your OH.
and you're going to get BR substituted at all positions. It's going to be BR at two position, a BR at the fourth position, and a BR at the at the sixth position. So this would would be called two four six. Try Bromo. Try Bromo Phenol. And HBR molecules are going to be produced. Okay, every bromine is going to substitute one of the hydrogen atoms, and an HPR molecule is going to be produced. Uh, bromine aqueous would be used. Uh, no catalyst is required. It's going to be a considerably fast reaction. And this is also known as a test for identification of phenols. So this reaction, specific reaction, is is also used as a test for identification of phenols. Uh, and the observation in that is, the first thing is red-brown bromine gets decolorized. I said red-brown bromine gets decolorized and the other thing is, uh, red-brown bromine also gets decolorized in alkenes. So that's not sufficient because you will still be confused whether it's an alkene or a phenol. Uh, the additional uh, observation is, that a white precipitate of 246 tribromophenol is produced also. So, so that's your additional observation. So this thing over here is a white precipitate. Do you get 246? So that's, that's your white precipitate. Uh, so remember the conditions, the conditions have now changed slightly. Okay, so is this clear? Are you clear? Yes, sir. Mepuz, clear? Yes, sir. Clear? Yes, sir. Uh, so the next one is uh, uh, same, same with brumination of, uh, I said, let's, let's talk about, uh, about nitration first for phenols. Now nitration, of phenols is also going to be considerably considerably faster uh, compared to the previous nitration that we did. Previous nitration, what happened in the previous nitration? Uh, it was this one. Okay, in the previous nitration, the NO2 plus uh, electrophile had to be created. You first had to react concentrate sulfuric acid and nitric acid temperature 55 degrees centigrade. That was the first thing that had to be done so that you create an NO2 plus electrophile and then that NO2 plus one would attract the electrons and the whole reaction would happen. Uh, but in the case of phenol, you don't need to actually create the electrophile. You just add nitric acid directly. Okay. So highly activated benzene, the electron density is so high that it polarizes, I said, it's so high that it polarizes the molecule by itself. I mean, no help is needed. You don't need concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So highly accurate benzene polarizes nitric acid on its own. So no help is required from concentrated sulfuric acid. So that's not added. So the reaction would be So here's your, let's say here's your benzene and you have OH and you're reacting it with the uh, nitric acid. Now, if you react it with concentrated nitric acid and don't add sulfuric acid, no need for sulfuric acid, no need to increase the temperature as well. So if you react it with concentrated nitric acid, what's going to be produced is this thing. So here's your OH. And uh, NO2 would get attached on all three positions. 
So there's going to be NO2 over here, and there's going to be an NO2 over here. And there's going to be an NO2 molecule over here. So it's going to get attached on all three positions, and this would be called trinitrophenol. Tri okay, that's, that's basically it. Uh, the other thing is that the reaction would not only happen with concentrated nitric acid, but can also happen with concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, no, sorry, uh, dilute nitric acid. Now, if you use dilute nitric acid, that's a much milder condition. So only one NO2 would get attached at best. Take all that sort. It's not always true, but mostly it's going to be just one NO2 that's going to get attached. So there would be, because it's 246 directing, it's going to be, I mean, you're going to have two positions, two different types of products obtained in this reaction. So you have I said, so, so you're going to have two different types of products attached. This is OH, this is also OH. So the NO2 would get attached either at position number four, or it's going to get attached at position number two. So the chances are, if you use milder conditions, if you use dilute nitric acid, uh, then only uh, one NO2 would, would get attached. If you use stri slightly stronger conditions, then you're going to get uh, three NO2 attached. Um, you still don't need a catalyst. Okay, like in the previous case, so for phenols, you don't need to use a catalyst. And for phenylamine, the reactions are going to be the same. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm, just, I'm not going to rewrite the reaction. It's going to be exactly the same conditions. So same reactions for phenylamine. So exactly same reactions for phenylamine uh, and the same with uh, bromination of phenols. You're going to have the same as uh, so you're going to have the same reactions with phenylamine. TKF, what was phenol, phenylamine? It was, it was this thing. Uh, it was the 246 directing group, uh, which is over here. Then instead of OH, you're going to have NH2. So that was what a phenylamine was. So you're going to have exactly the same reactions if, as okay, these two. So you're going to have exactly the same reactions if you had NH2 over here. I mean, it's going to be the same thing. NH2 would come over here. And if you had NH2 over here instead of OH, uh, then you're going to get the same two types of products, whether you use concentrated nitric acid or, or dilute nitric acid. Okay, is Sarah clear? Aisha, is this clear? Abu Raira clear? Ali? Sarah, is this Yes, sir. Okay. Reba, clear? Any questions? Nahi hai? Yes, it's clear. Aisha, so, so remember this. We are still talking about electrophilic substitution, but of derivative compounds. Uh, now for 3-5 directing groups, there are no special conditions. Usually 3-5, uh, uh, you don't get questions about groups that are 3-5 directing. Okay, so their conditions, 3-5, uh, I'll just tell you about it, where is 3-5. I mean this one. So I'm just going to talk about 3-5 directing groups. We have done this here, that the reactions, uh, the overall electron density is lesser. So that's why the reaction would be slow or almost non-existent. Okay, it won't happen. Because because electron density come over. If the electron density is lesser, electrophiles are not going to get attracted. But if in the question uh, it comes that you have to substitute uh, something in a benzene that has a three-five directing group, so just three or five positions go up and go and attach it. For example, okay, I'm just going to do one example over here. Okay. So just as an example. Okay, I have an aldehyde next to a benzene. Okay, so 
there is an aldehyde serial bond O and H. And with that, they are bromination. Kare, hai? And they, have, they haven't told us the condition. All the extreme conditions are going to be Because with that deactivated, hoga ke, the reaction would probably uh, not happen very quickly. Hai? So strong... I just strong conditions would be needed. Whatever those strong conditions are, we don't care. So, if you know that the reaction is happening, you draw the product, draw kar do, the product kya hoga? Kya wo three pe attach hoga, ya five pe attach hoga. Uh, the good thing is you just have to draw one of them. Because three five positions are exactly the same. So, you, you have an aldehyde. So, three positions kya hogi? Okay, let's say bromination or the bromine gets attached over here. So, three and five positions are exactly the same. Wo yahan pe attach karo, udhar attach karo, it's going to be exactly, exactly the same. So, these three five directing groups. Ka hai. Yeah, the clear is Saroko. The full clear is? Yes. Ali clear hai? Hai. I said now. Yes, sir. Thirty. Now the next thing is uh, uh, the two more electrophilic substitution reactions. Okay, अभी तक वो electrophilic substitution ही चल रहा है. And these two electrophilic substitutions are uh, just hold on one second. As an electrophilic substitution, again, uh, this one is going to be uh, alkylation. Okay. Or any cheese key, of anything, but mostly it's alkylation of benzene. Okay. It's on the benzene. It could be a phenol, it could be a phenylamine, it could just be an adene, it could be a benzene. Okay. But every time there's going to be a benzene ring. Um, alkylation is okay, a carbon chain basically gets attached. Yeah, an alkyl chain so an alkyl chain gets attached to benzene that's it in this reaction uh, it is electrophilic substitution uh, although the mechanism is not uh, required so so you're going to have a benzene Okay, so let's say there's just this benzene. And there's going to be a halogenoalkane. Okay, so let's say you have CH3. And uh, there is a uh, halogen attached. And an H attached. And an H attached. Okay, so there's, there's a halogenoalkane. So let's rotate it. The carbon over here is positive. Uh, the molecule is thora sa or karlete rotate. It's a karlete, okay? But this could draw easy to karlete in just one second. Okay, so you have a CL and you have an H and you have another H and you have, let's say, CH2 and CH3. Now, halogenoalkanes, the carbon over here is positively charged. Why is it positively charged? Because it's attached to a very electronegative CL, which has a partial negative charge. Uh, the reason I had to point it in a different direction is because there are electrons over here. So negative charge would be like, like on the opposite side. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be repelled by it. Positive side would be the one that would be coming closer to it. It's going to be the same same electrophilic substitution ke the electron cloud would be attracted and when it gets attracted the electrons over here are going to get repelled okay so the cl would be repelled and obviously you would need a catalyst of, for further polarization okay benzene ka jo electron cloud hai, that's not very it doesn't have a very high electron density so uh, so it would be very strongly attracted to the positive charge so you would add a catalyst 
for example, ALCL3 is added as a catalyst or FeCl3 is added as, as a catalyst. So on the other side, ALCL3 would pull the electrons, but it would pull the Cl away so that carbon gets a full positive charge and it gets more strongly attracted to the benzene. And the result would be, so the result is going to be that the benzene molecule So the benzene molecule is uh, is going to get attracted to the carbon atom that I've drawn over there, and it's good. It's going to bond with it, so it's going to be CH two, CH three. So the carbon chain gets attached with its two hydrogens. TK. So this carbon over here, positively charged, it gets attached, and the Cl breaks away, uh, and ends up forming. HCl. Okay, why does it end up forming HCl? Because there's, there was an H. But I'm not drawing the full mechanism. I'm just drawing the final product. Okay. So an ALCl3 catalyst is required for for alkylation. So ALCl3 or FeCl3. These are the catalysts that are needed for this reaction. So this is alkylation. Can alkyl chain gets attached? Okay, but you need to have a halogenoalkane for this reaction. So I'm 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 just going to do another reaction. Okay, remember the mechanism is not important. It's the same mechanism. It's the same electrophilic substitution mechanism. Uh, just one more. Let's say. Here's your benzene ring, and I have a molecule which is TK because you have to learn how to attach the carbon chain. Let's say I have this molecule, and there's a carbon chain over here as well, and there's a seal attached over here. TK, what you need to identify is K which of the carbons is going to get attached to benzene. So it's going to be this carbon atom over here. This is the carbon atom that's that has positive charge. So this is what you have to identify. That it's going to be this carbon atom, the one with the positive charge that's going to get attracted to benzene. So this is how you're going to learn how to bond with benzene that, uh, let me draw the benzene again. So this carbon atom, TK, focus on this carbon atom, that this carbon atom goes and attaches to the benzene because it's positively charged. And draw the rest of the groups with it. It has two CH3s. So there's CH3, there's another CH3, and there's a carbon chain, a CH2 and a CH3. TK, so it's, it's going to be this carbon atom that is actually going this one over here. TK, this is what you have to learn. And there's going to be an HCl byproduct that would be formed. So just remember that. Okay, whenever you have a carbon chain, a complicated carbon chain, no matter how complicated it is, uh, the carbon, alpha carbon, the one that is attached to Cl uh, or the functional group, that's the one that's going to get attached or get attracted to benzene. But you would need an ALCl3 or an FeCl3 catalyst. Okay, Sarah, is this clear? Aisha, clear? Abu Reda, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also you have another thing called acylation. Okay, what is acylation? It's 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 a it's a reaction in which you have a benzene. Exactly same. Usitra. You have a benzene plus acyl chloride. Plus, you would need a uh, catalyst again. ALCl3 or FeCl3 catalyst would be required. So what's an acyl chloride? Acyl chloride is like a carboxylic acid with a chlorine instead of an OH. So this, an R is a carbon chain. So this is an acyl chloride. And the same thing would happen. Okay, there's going to be benzene.
अच्छा एंड देयर गोइंग बी एन एसएल क्लोराइड लाइक सी एच थ्री एंड गोइंग बी सी लेट्स से डबल बॉन्ड ओ एंड सी एल सेम थिंग वुड हैपन दैट दिस कार्बन वुड बी पॉजिटिवली चार्ज इट्स ऑलरेडी पॉजिटिवली चार्ज बिकॉज इट्स नाउ बॉन्डेड टू टू इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिव एलिमेंट्स सो इट्स गोइंग टू गेट इट्स गोइंग टू अट्रैक्ट द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड द सी एल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वुड गेट रिपेल्ड ठीक है द सी एल वुड बी पॉइंटिंग प्रॉब्लम इन डिफरेंट इन अ डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन इसको बल्कि ऊपर से ले आते हैं कि electrons are going to get attracted to carbon and the cl electrons are going to get repelled so it's going to be this carbon atom that that is going to get attached the one that's forming the acyl chloride so the product would be okay the c double bond o ch3 is going to get attached acha and the by product would be hcl because the cl would be lost and the h would be substituted so that's your acylation acylation reaction so you have an alkylation reaction which is electrophilic substitution and you have an acylation reaction which is also electrophilic substitution you just need to know that these two reactions exist uh, the mechanism is not important for them uh, the catalyst would be required in this it's going to be exactly the same So that pretty much sums up electrophilic substitution. We've done electrophilic substitution of two, four, six directing groups, uh, three, five directing groups. Uh, we studied the mechanism of benzene alone. ठीक है. And we've also done alkylation and acylation. ठीक है. कोई question नहीं है. Is this clear? Are you both clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. चलें ठीक है. So we'll continue with the uh, with another topic. ठीक है. इसी में organic के अंदर. Next class में. चले ओके सर अल्लाह हाफिज़ टेक केयर अल्लाह हाफिज़